That is. I know that you are like hidden, so please just, can you just come like near? Because my idea here was kind of try to make this a little bit more informal, to talk to you, to ask you things. So uh, for me, it would be easier just to have you near, okay, so I can just look at your eyes, see okay. your expressions, etc. And I guess it's not so difficult to see me, so if you just could come forward. Um, okay, so um, I'll start presenting myself so you can know a little bit about my background and why I'm going to talk about multilingual social media marketing. So it's a PDF, so you actually have to scroll down. We had to do a little bit of trick. So, yeah. So, um, my two uh, main fields of, well, I have a lot of things, but right now I'm working on two different, very different things. Okay. One is um, I'm working for a big, huge company, which is Expedia, which is the largest online travel agency in the world. And, uh, and I'm the head, I'm the director uh, of all the Spanish contents for Expedia. That, mean, that means that I'm responsible of the quality of everything that is written and posted in Spanish in Spain uh, in Expedia. So, as part of Expedia, um, I'm also part of the marketing, the general marketing department, where they establish the marketing strategies for the whole Expedia um, company. But also, I'm part of the marketing of the Spanish marketing uh, desk, where they receive these general guidelines and they decide what to do with that. Okay. Uh, so I have this huge company, huge um, department, huge budget huge resources, I can do whatever I want with that, okay? Um, but also, um, on the other side, I am myself an entrepreneur. So I've, I've set up a, a few companies myself, I still work with some of them. So, so you can do something with that huge budget? Uh, no, <laughs> sometimes I'm so tempted, you know, when they say, well, you know, if we're Expedia, we're, we're looking for a company, small company to do some things like some videos or something and do you know somebody and of course i cannot recommend i cannot <laughs> mix things uh, so it's not ethical but yeah so we have Expedia, and then we have the small, the small companies um, the startups that i have created where i always do the marketing part but again it's startups we don't have money we don't have resources normally i do everything on my own and we don't have strategies, like a global strategy, we just go with the flow, okay? Uh, and it's two completely different things, and which is amazing for me is that I learn a lot from both, because um, with a big, huge company, you learn how to see things big, okay? And with small companies, you know how to make the most out of what you got. So sometimes I apply to Expedia uh, things that I have learned with a small company, easier, easier ways to do things, cheaper ways to do things, simpler, simpler ways to do things. And with experience, sometimes oh, with the startups, I also apply this idea of trying to make things big, trying to make things always bigger. Right? Um, so these are my two principal backgrounds. Um, and then talking about these two different case scenarios. As I said, we have Expedia, which is actually a corporation, which means that they are a lot of companies inside Expedia. We have Expedia itself, we have hotels in Spain, we have our own brand, which is Hoteles.com. We have Venere, which is another uh, travel agency, um, and we have four or five companies that operate mainly in Asia. Okay, so it's a corporation of about five, six companies themselves. For example, um, TripAdvisor was part of Expedia too, but they sold it um, one year ago. Okay. And they have bought part of Tribago too. Okay. So when I'm talking also that I work for Expedia, it means that I work for a lot of different brands inside Expedia. And each brand has a different tone, a different style, a different voice, a different market, etc. So to give you an example of the main uh, two main um, brands, which is Hotels, Hotels.com, uh, hotels, uh, and Expedia. Expedia, if you go to the website, you will see that it's more, a little bit more formal, okay? 
it's um, it's a website like very still quite traditional, although they try to change that. Okay, and if you go to hotels.com, hotels.com, you see the colors is red. They have changed it uh, recently. The way they speak to you, it's very informal. It's like they try to be like your friend, the friend that knows a lot of traveling, a lot of things about traveling, and recommend things to you. Okay, and Expedia is the company that you trust because they know their opinion. Okay, so they have a lot of different tones inside the same corporation, and each of it has its own uh, strategy. Okay, and then in the startup ecosystem, I have uh, myself started or co-founded three startups, which are Subabel, Subabel, and Angiosophic. And as I said, we are small companies. We only work with two, three languages maximum, okay? which is always Spanish, because we're Spanish, English, and then depending on the market, French or German. Okay? So we only work with two, three languages at the same time. Whereas in Expedia, we are 22 languages at the same time. That means, talking about social media, that Expedia has Twitter and Facebook in 22 <laughs> languages with 22 different accounts, all right? So try to imagine that. Um, so what I'm going to try is to get in the middle, okay, because they are two different, um, they were very, they were, uh, very different things, and try to talk to you and try to discuss with you how Actually, what can we do okay, when we want to start a social media strategy and we know that we want to do it in at least two languages? Okay. Um, bringing on the things that I have learned from both working with a lot of budget and working with no budget at all. Okay. So it's going to be the next slide. Um, so for example, of course, we decide that we want to use Facebook and Twitter, have different accounts maybe in at least two or three languages, okay? So, of course, for the first, uh, before thinking about the languages, we have to think about the markets, okay? So, um, actually, where do we want to really sell, okay? Which are the markets, which are the countries, right? For example, someone, someone might say, well, Spanish is the, the best language because then you, you have Spanish from Spain and you have the whole South America. So this is cheap because with one language I target a lot of markets, okay, a lot of countries, okay. Well, sometimes that doesn't make sense because South America, for many things, is a pool market. Yeah, but okay? you can read half of it in the states as well. <laughs> well, again, depending on what you are selling and to whom. Yeah. So as I said, depending on what do you want to sell and to who, maybe South America. Although it's big, it's huge, maybe it doesn't make sense to just write in Spanish because it's easy and cheap because we, we can write in Spanish. Because maybe South America is not the market that is going to give us the revenue. Maybe they will read us, maybe they will know us, but maybe they won't be the ones to give us the money. Okay. Is that a, a pool market? No, it depends. Huh? It's very complex. Okay. The problem with, with South America, again, is, is a lot of countries with different political and economical situations, okay? So Brazil, for example, is better, is better, but Guatemala, for example, or Panama. And again, it depends on what you want to sell, okay? If you address, for example, to other companies, maybe it's not the strongest uh, market, okay? Uh, if, you, um, if you want to work with, uh, oh, your startup is related with luxury things, Maybe South America is not the best market to go. So sometimes, talking about the Spanish, we think, well, we are going to start using Spanish because it's, I can do it, I'm Spanish, okay? And it's going to be great because I will reach all Spain and all South America. Well, it's cheap, but in the end, we are not really making money. Okay? And the second thing, as, as you probably know, is that we have Spanish from Spain, and then we have Latin America and Spanish. And that means that even though in Latin America they will understand what we write, they won't feel the brand as something they can relate to. 
they will feel it as something foreign, even though it's in Spanish, even though they can understand it. This brand doesn't relate to me. I don't feel close to that product. Okay? Think the other way around. What happens when we see websites that are in Spanish, but they are in Latin American Spanish? How do you feel? You understand it? Yes. But do you feel close to that brand? But then again, a small yeah. point, I might be wrong, and I, yeah. I don't want to sort of act on any prejudices, mm -hmm. but I'm guessing that the perception from Latin America of websites in like Castilian Spanish mm -hmm. isn't necessarily going to be bad. I mean, emotionally, they're not going to relate, probably, mm -hmm. but... It is bad, actually. It is bad. Yeah, that's the, that's okay. the really fun thing. Spanish people from Spain, okay, they feel uncomfortable when they, they, they read things in Latin American, Spanish, because they feel it's like something cheap. Okay? When we see, I'm going to give examples in Spanish, but when we see things like in Mexican, in, in, in Argentina, it feels like something cheap. It doesn't feel, you don't trust that website so much. So things that come, for example, that we want to pay something. We are in a website, okay, uh, and we want to buy something. And everything is written with the um, compra esta cosa, vos, something like that. You feel, you don't feel so confident. Okay? It happens also when the website is not well written. Okay? When you see that the style is not good, when you see that it's orthographic mistakes. Okay? So if you're going to pay money and you see orthographic mistakes in the website, you don't feel so confident. But, but does it work the, the other way and around? The other way around that's, that's my and question. the other way around is, again, the uh, really interesting thing about languages is that they are always related to culture and to past and to history. Okay? And what happens with Latin America? Well, they hate Spanish from Spain because they hate that they have been imposed. Okay? Because they have you know, the other way around. I mean, many companies, they do something in Spanish from Spain and because they don't want to spend more money to adapt that, they sell the same product, the same service with the Spanish from Spain to Latin America. And they say, this is cheap. You have not even taken the effort to, to just adapt this to my culture, okay? And you are imposing me <laughs> this, um, this language, okay, which I, I can understand, but it's not my language. And historically, they uh, they hate they hate that 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 kind of imposition of your language is not as uh, important as mine. Okay, that's what they understand. Your language is not as important as mine. I consider that your language doesn't worth the money. I consider that you don't deserve to have your own variant. That's what they understand. Okay, yeah. It, it's not the same though, right? Well, you could you could tell me what do you think? What American what an American think when they see a British English website? What do you feel? Uh, I've heard of it from, from Americans. I'm not bothered. <laughs> <laughs> for Americans, especially in for Americans, uh, listen somebody speaking in British is for them is, it reminds me of something clever, um, um, intelligent, and intellectual. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I think. I mean, it, again, it, it, I, don't, I don't think that it's the same. I think that uh, it's not that I, colonial. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You haven't been. It Google. might be if I was English, maybe I would look on some some website in the United States, you know, a U.S. website, and go, you know, nah. these these wankers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe this, maybe it doesn't go that way, but for Americans, you know, Australia doesn't matter. I'll you know I'll buy from wherever. I I can only get it in Australia, you know. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, that is that is true, actually. That is true. Um, and, and with, I mean, with Spanish, we have that very clear, and that's why if you go to any big company, you will see that they try to have as many variants as possible, which uh, is always Spanish from Spain, uh, is Spanish from Mexico, okay, Spanish from Argentina, okay. These are the main. And sometimes they have something they call um, Latin American Spanish, okay, which is something that should be aimed for all Latin America, which more or less work. Okay. Um, but it's true that, fortunately, we don't have that with other languages like British English and American English, more or less, it's okay. But again, we're talking about 
it depends on the brand. It depends on how much you want people to feel you close to, 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 to them. Okay? So if you really want them to feel that you are their neighbor, their friend, you know, these little things like, mm, yeah, we speak the same language, but we're not so similar. Mm -hmm. okay? Depend, depends on the brand, depends on, on how important for you is to create emotions, to, to make people have emotions for your brand. Okay? I myself am very, very fan of, of trying to make that on social media. Okay? Actually, I would say that nowadays we have like two trends in social media. One is to recreate the same style that we have in internet marketing, which is like a corporate style, okay? Like very correct, very, it doesn't have to be very formal, but it's very neutral, okay? It's very neutral. And, uh, and then we have brands that they create a, a, almost like a character in Facebook and Twitter. They, it seems it's a person talking to you, okay? It's a company that has, we don't know how, has turned into a person, okay, and is talking to you. And a great example, if you want to analyze it, is, as I said, in Hotels.com, they have a character, okay, they, they even created a character, which is called Smart, okay, uh, because the idea with Hotels.com is it's, it's smart bookings, it's very powerful. So if you book with them, you are smart. So Smart is a character, okay, so it's a cartoon, and I think only for America, smart is the one that talks in Facebook and talks in uh, Twitter, okay? Although the things he says would be maybe the same that we say in the other Twitter's accounts. But, again, there is a huge difference between I, the brand, tell you that, I, that um, my holidays are great and my offer is great, and I, smart, your friend, tell you that I have discovered something amazing and I'm going to, I'm going to start you with you because you're going to love it. Okay. So that's going to be the difference. And um, it's very interesting to see these two different trends. Maybe also we have to decide which one we want to use depending again on the brand. Okay. But I personally love this new approach in social media of trying to create like people. Right? So when you are looking for traveling, Agencies, when you want to travel, you're gonna trust in like this person that is recommend, uh, making a recommendation instead of this company. Okay, and the same goes for almost anything, any any product. Okay, I would say that we can use that strategy for almost anything. Okay, but it's very difficult to maintain. Really difficult to maintain. It it, it takes a lot of effort because we have to create the character. Okay, we have to create what is the character, right? How is it's, it's fun, is it's um, intelligent, is it's daring, it's how is it? We really have to create a whole psychological profile so that even though you have the topics, you know what you have to say, okay, because you know what you have to sell, and then you transform those topics to okay, how how this character would say that. Okay? Instead of adapting the content. Uh, what I said is, you have to adapt the content to what the character will say. Okay? What your friend that knows you and knows a lot about traveling would tell you. Okay. So, um, more things. I was, I mean, all, all these are things that I wanted to talk to you because all of them are really important. But this is the tone of voice which I'm talking about. Okay. So, in social media, we work a lot with this, with the tone of voice. So we sit down, we say, which is going to be the tone of voice? Okay, we, and uh, the second thing is, are we going to keep exactly the same tone of voice for all the languages? Does it make sense? It's risky. Because in different languages, different cultures, the levels of formality and informality are different. Okay. So for example, in English, we can be very formal. We can, we can be really formal and that, work, that works well. If you try to translate that informality into Asian languages, you have a problem because for them it's very difficult to distinguish between informality and um, being a little bit rude. Okay? 
and being rude is something that they don't accept. So exactly the same sentence can be really, really, really funny and really good in English, and it can be directly rude, unacceptable in Chinese. Okay. So that's the problem that we have with translations. I mean, you need a translator, of course, but in the end, most or more than a translator, you need an expert on the culture, an expert that can tell you, right now, this is not going to work. Even though I can adapt it, this is not going to work for this um, market. We have to change it completely. Or even we can just omit it. Right. So that's, that's, that's why we also we use the term realization instead of translation. We try to make things local. We take the message, okay, which is an English message, and we want to make it sound as a Chinese message. It has to sound as a Chinese message. Um, and again, we have to take into account the social and political and regional uh, situation in those markets. Okay. Take into account, for example, now all the countries that are in really difficult situations and you want to sell them something. Okay. Traveling again, it's very, very difficult. Okay. You are actually telling people that maybe you don't have money to eat to spend money on vacations. Right? So what do you do? You stop selling in those places? You have to be very careful. Okay. So I can tell you, for example, um, one really, really a good example of something that happened actually in Expedia, relating this sensitivity, uh, this um, how people can be sensitive, sensi sensible, sensitive to these topics. They, for the Italian market, okay, they wanted to sell Italian people. Uh, English destinations, okay? They wanted to convince Italian people to go to London for the uh, something related to the royal wedding, okay? So they wanted Italian people, Italian women actually, to go to London to make shopping, okay? To travel, to make shopping, and to go to the favorite shops of someone from the royalty, okay? So they put a, a picture of princess or whatever, okay? Going out of a shop, and the, the idea was um, travel to London for a weekend, shop everything you want, or buy everything you want, and have exactly the same shoes that blah 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 is wearing. Okay. They thought it's going to be good. I mean, women will like that. They will like the idea of going on a shopping spree on a weekend and going to the same shop and, and feel like like princesses. Okay, that was the idea. Well, it was a disaster. It was a complete disaster. There were people complaining about how could they put something so insensitive, taking into account the problems that they have in Italy. The people don't have money to go to uh, London to spend money in shoes. How could be so insensitive to put something like that? And it was a disaster. Okay? But then there is a second um, a second part of this drama. Okay, we have we had, we had a good idea, then it was a bad idea, and then they discovered, actually, that there were so many people talking about that, okay, angry people, that is true. There were so many people talking about that, okay, that the awareness of the brand grew a lot. And they even got to feature in newspapers, and uh, they, yeah, the, the, the whole thing, okay, appeared in all the Italian newspapers and in all the news, and without paying for it, they had the greatest and the hugest um, marketing campaign in all Italian media without paying for it. Okay, so... This history reminds me, you know what happened in Madrid a, few, a few weeks ago? Mm -hmm. uh, Samsung, yeah. in Madrid, decided to launch a marketing strategy. It was, if you go to the oil station just in M M M30, yeah. just now, and you by more than 50 euros in, in, in oil, we will give you a Samsung for free. Like a Samsung for free. So automatically, all the cars were, were to M30 to the same oil station. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, automatically, the police came, it closed. It just <laughs> one, only two hours. In two hours, it was collapsed at the M30. It was illegal stuff, but it creates it a wave of the people that are talking about Samsung. And, so, so, it's more or less the same. so yeah, I think I mean they didn't they, they, they didn't want that, okay, 
it didn't work actually to have you know this problem because it was an image problem. They had actually then, of course, to do something to to fix that. Okay, so but they did it. Okay, so I don't, I don't remember. I mean, they apologize for that, and I think they launched another campaign uh, to try to correct that. But in the end, um, they got a lot of marketing and a lot of publicity, and the awareness of the brand in Italy grew. Exponentially, and they didn't. They didn't. It didn't cost any money for them. Okay. So this is, of course, I would say it's not the way to go. But the thing with social media is you have to risk it. Okay. Because you're talking about when you talk to people, when you want to feel so close to people, when you want people to feel so close to you, that means that sometimes they are not going to like you. Sometimes you will disappoint them. Okay. Because they thought you were different. They thought you wouldn't say that. Um, another campaign, again, always talking about uh, girls, it's about when they try to um, promote Germany, okay, and the beer, uh, beer festival, the what's it called? Beer festival? October, October, October Fest. Fest. Okay. Well, try to imagine which kind of images we always see when we see October Fest. Girls. Cleavage. <laughs> with lots of beer. With a lot of beer, but girls with. <laughs> Yeah. Big books, exactly. Okay. Well, the thing, the thing is that they do that. They do that. They have actually they use the same picture because sometimes they change the pictures depending on the market. Okay. So in Asia, they use pictures with Asian people, etc. But they decided to use the same picture with uh, two or three girls, really powerful girls, <laughs> with the beer. Okay. They use the same picture for all the markets on Facebook to promote discounts to go to the Oktoberfest, right? Well, in Germany, in the German Facebook, again, German women were really, really angry with that. Okay? They are so fed up of seeing that that party was about seeing girls. Okay? They were so fed up, they were always complaining about why do you always sell the same image, the same picture? Oktoberfest is something great, it's amazing, we girls, we love it, we love to go there because we love the beer and have fun. And you are making this. And they look like that, but... <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is that you are turning this thing into um, a, a festival that's only for men that want to go, girls, etc. And, and we like, the, 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 girls, the, the thing is that girls or women didn't consider that the brand okay, should be yeah. that way should empower okay, that behavior. Right? So from now on, actually, Expedia, they always control a lot of the pictures, and they try to avoid as much as possible to use a lot of nudity, or to try to sell exotic vacations just with women, you know. Because actually you're not just, you, are, you don't see the, 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 um, the, 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 well, you don't see the destination itself, you just see a, a Wonderful women, and you don't see anything behind. You just see, okay, that's great women. I'm going to go there. Okay, so they're trying just to focus more on other things. Okay, if you remember, this comes from the 80s, the, the postcards that we had in the 80s. Okay, and if you go to yeah, in the 80s, you, you used to go to any destination, any any beach destination, and you would say always a really really great girl, uh, naked or almost naked, and that was the postcard of of the beach destination. So, in the travel agency or industry, they're trying to change that, okay? What happens when actually I am the girl and I want to go on holidays? What do they want to sell me? Because that picture doesn't say anything to me. Okay. Well, depending on the <laughs> Yeah, but maybe no. Maybe no, maybe I don't want to go there to meet girls. I want to do other things. Yeah. Well, there's also the idea of experiential marketing. Yeah. People tend to put themselves, if they see a woman that they yeah. think is like them, they put themselves in that place, and that's good marketing. Yeah, that's good. And that's when you see like more normal people, when you see a group of people smiling together, and you imagine yourself with your friends having okay. fun. But you have a, like a really wonderful girl, like really, really a model, okay? You don't relate to that model, okay? That's the, when you, when it's something very saturated. Right. But as you said, that is something I use in a lot. Um, and that's the change. Now you see, if you take a look to the pictures, most of the time when you see people in the pictures, it's like normal people. 
Right. And you, and you see men, women, kids, you see um, young people, older people, you see a lot of variety there because then you can relate to that. Okay, what happens when you are 15? What happens when you are 60? You want to see people of those stages in the pictures. Okay. So that's exactly, that's, that's something that has changed a lot. And you can actually see it. If you now take a look to the, all these traveling um, pictures, you will see that they tend to be, the people tend to be more normal. It's not just making people um, run around. It's about perfection versus reality. It was about selling sex. Let's let's be clear. They, yeah. were, <laughs> sex. they were selling sex. They were they were selling sexual attraction. Okay. So when you see something that you like and that you feel attracted to, which is a body, okay, then you feel attracted to the product or the destination. That was that was the first idea. Nowadays, they put a normal housewife on a Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could be. Oh. <laughs> so again, the thing is that we have different languages, but we have different social backgrounds. Okay, and which means that we have to take into account how our product or service functions inside society right now. It's something that the society really needs, so it's great because you actually can help them. Right? It's a product or a service that actually is going to help them with their problems, or it's not something basic, okay? which could be the case of traveling. Then you have to find a way to sell it without sounding um, insensitive. Without so, how do we sell something that is not necessary in countries where people don't have money? It's, it's very difficult to find the way to do it. It's very difficult. So how do you do it? Discounts. Discounts. Okay, you deserve to be happy. You deserve to still have some happiness. So do something small, a small break, uh, a small break, a small weekend, something closer, something cheap. And we also give you discounts so you can do it. Okay. And of course, doing uh, promotions like uh, giving gifts, giving you things for free. But it's difficult, and you have to be even more creative than that. Than that. And it's something that the uh, travel uh, industry now is facing. Okay? We have a lot of countries like uh, Italy, Spain, Greece, etc., that they don't travel as the same way they used to travel anymore. Okay? So we have, you have to, to, to take that into account before saying, hey, I spent 1,000 euros in that because it's, it's great, whatever. Why am I going to spend 1,000 euros? I don't have that money. It's stupid. Okay, um, okay. Oh, more things. Um, and then also the, when we have the strategy, as I said, with different languages, um, we can do that in two different ways. Okay? When we have a big company, uh, you have the global strategy, which is the top to bottom strategy. We have the global idea, okay? The headquarters decided to, I don't know, to um, sell um, the mobile apps, for example, okay? They want, they want to, they have created a mobile app to make bookings, and they want to promote that, okay? That's the global strategy. And then they communicate, they have a meeting with all the different uh, markets and, and countries, and they say, well, this is the global strategy. Now it's your turn to tell me how you're going to do it in your country. Okay. And then each marketing department starts to say, well, in my country, the best way to do it is going to be this. Okay. So as long as all of them fulfill the same uh, objective, it's good to have some freedom. Okay. What you can't do is try to control everything, try to replicate exactly same campaign in all the markets. You just translate that literally and go. That doesn't work most of the time. It doesn't work. Okay. So you have to give freedom to each team, each country to decide how to do that campaign, when to do it, because maybe uh, it's not the moment. Okay. And also, if they want to adapt it, Maybe the idea is good, but we have to adapt some things, we have to change some things, okay? So that would be the top to bottom strategy. And of course,
because we have the bottom to top. Okay? Which means that the good thing about having different languages and different teams is that each team can come up with different ideas that they can share. Okay? So, for example, remember that I think it was the German team. The German team decided to do something very, very, um, very cheap, actually, to promote Expedia, which was to record themselves, okay, the people, they were themselves, they were recording themselves, going to their favorite parts, okay, mm -hmm. favorite uh, places, talking to the camera, and explain why those places were the special places for them. Okay, it was real, it was people working for the marketing team. And um, it was only for Germany only to promote German destinations. And it was zero budget, okay? It was the, girl, the, the guy, the, he would go to his favorite spot, he would just record it, talk to the camera, and explain why this, this place was amazing. And then what we did is that we did the subtitles for all the languages and put that video in all the countries. So in the end, okay, with zero <laughs> budget, they had an amazing video promoting special places that only a local can know, okay? So you can go to Germany and go to those places that have been recommended by somebody that knows a lot about that, okay? And that was only for Germany. At the beginning, it was only for Germany. But as, as I said, once you have the video, we just did the subtitles and used that video in other countries. And other countries said, oh, well, we can do that with my country, that. So we, and actually, if you look for that, you will find the videos for Germany, the videos from UK, I think. And it was just like that. People from the marketing department were going there, having fun, and recording themselves, and sharing that. Okay? So something that came from the German department, with no money, no time at all, it came from bottom to top. And all the different countries decided to do the same. And it wasn't, it wasn't global, it wasn't flat. Which is good again to have this kind of flexibility to come up with new ideas and adopt them if they work. Okay? To take risks, as I said. And finally, we have to take into account that something that we do for one language or market, we have actually to study carefully if we're going to use it for the language, okay, as it is, because maybe it can work as it is, or if we're going to adapt it. Or we can just omit it because it doesn't work. So each actually each campaign has to be analyzed. Each campaign is different. Okay. Each time you have to decide what are you going to do in that case. Right. Maybe it's the time, maybe it's not the time. That's also an idea. So what do you think? So far. <laughs> it's all to think. I love the idea of uh, personalization and using a character, and I'd love to hear uh, more about that some other time, about how you actually create that character and what to think about. It ties into Todd's work as well. I mean, the, the statistics and the sort of very uh, analytical uh, attack frame that you have needs to tie into what she says about social media and and the, the, there's something here that I feel very strongly for myself, what I do, that I need to, to understand better. And, and especially by creating this character, and, and uh, to me this is very real, it's revealing. Amazing. It's either creating a character or something that also I've, I've seen, which is really powerful too, is actually having somebody from inside the company that has a unique voice, a unique way of telling things, twittering, okay, with his name. But only, you know, only few people can do that, okay? Because it has to be, it, it can't be a job like, I have to Twitter about something. It has to be somebody that is so, so funny, so unique, so good with words, so spontaneous, that it can actually Twitter about the environment, okay? Because it hasn't got to be only about my company. It's just environment, okay? So try to study which is the whole environment, your industry, and be as broad as possible, okay, in that sense. And, and talk about interesting things, things that make you think, things that make you feel, okay, things that you would like to share with your own friends. So it's the same mechanism, uh, it's the same mechanism as when you share something on Facebook with your friends, when you retweet something, okay, that's, that's the idea. 
So uh, Romero, for example, one of the things I've seen which works great, it's, um, um, it's not expedient in this case. It is a library, an English library, which is called Water Stones. Okay, it's library, books, right? Instead of just saying, okay, this, we have this new book, we have this new thing, blah, 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 which could be okay. I mean, books are normally interesting. Well, they have this, this person, you know, that works there that is like, not a freak, but is very, very creative. I guess that he maybe, he might be a writer too, okay? That he has his own world. He just starts twittering about poems. I mean, he starts just creating poems or saying things that he thought when he read something, okay? He has, you know, these people that has their own world, okay? That they have their own way of seeing things. Like Manolo Vieira. <laughs> Could be. Okay, these really special people that have their own world, they, their unique way of seeing things, you put them into Twitter and it's amazing, okay? Because you just want to see what they see, what they, what they say, okay? And because uh, and most of the time he's not talking about water stones. He most, most of the time, <coughs> but you know, you know he's tweeting for water stones and you remember that. And you kind of want to meet him and you want to go there to meet him because he's amazing, okay? So, and that is something we can do with the small startups, okay? We don't have the whole department, we don't have the whole marketing team, blah, 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 but we can actually try to, as I said, try to not to use Facebook and Twitter as this, you know, really neutral way of communicating. I, as a brand, tell you what to do, but I, as a person, that works for a brand, that loves his brand, want to share my passions with you. Okay. That's what I like. Yeah. What do you think about sense marketing, for example, or neural marketing? Have you worked? I haven't. I haven't yes. really. I haven't really studied that. But uh, the the the, I, the few things I know about it, I think that could could be a really. It could complement it mm -hmm. a lot. Because again, it's psychology. What it is is psychology. It's psychological. Okay. So uh, if we really know a lot about the um, psychology of the people we're addressing, the kind of things that move them. Okay. Then we can be better at that. But as I said, in the end, it's trying to be um, unique, okay? And not, not all people can do that. That leads me to the second, one of the things, I would go to the, to the final one, which is just some do's and don't that I wanted to share with you. It leads me to some of the things that I have learned. And uh, one, of, one of them is really, really be careful with outsourcing the job to social media. When you decide to source it to an agency, okay, that you give them the topics, okay, and they just create in, in my, I mean, from my point of view, but from what I've seen, maybe not all of them are the same, but from what, I, what I've seen is that it's very mechanical, it's very, very cold, okay? They just have the topics, okay, I have to talk about travels. And they just write about travels, okay, there is no, because they don't have any attachment with the brand, okay? And attachment, passion, is not something you can buy, right? Again, it depends. Maybe some agencies have a really, really good copywriters, okay? That can really um, get inside that world. Um, as far as, I mean, from what I've seen right now, I don't know many, many social media agencies that are really, really good. I know really good people that maybe work for social media agencies, okay? So I myself, I trust more freelancers. I think social media freelancers are much better than a whole social media company, for social media, I would say, in my point of view. Because the company, it's, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense, okay? They just give them topics and keywords, okay? And they just do something very mechanical. Okay, so I have to write about this and this and this. I have to compose a sentence that contains this. Okay, in Twitter and in Facebook, where you people are going to, to 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 follow you if they feel something about you, it doesn't work. Okay, so you're not working uh, in Facebook and Twitter. Most of the times, you are not really looking for information as it is. Okay, for that you have Google and you have Wikipedia. That's the thing. Social media, you are looking for 
these hidden things you cannot find in Google and Wikipedia. Okay. So that requires, from my point of view, uh, also a person, <coughs> in this case, native speaker. It has to be a native speaker, okay? Because even though you can really be bilingual, okay? Again, talking about jokes, talking about this sense of humor, talking about this um, way of seeing the culture, okay? If you are not native, it's very, very difficult, okay? There might be exceptions, but normally, native speakers are gonna be more creative, okay? They're gonna take more risks than somebody that is not a native speaker. So, no native speakers, they, they can do something completely perfect at a grammatical level, but it's not as passion. You, you, you can feel that they try to be as correct as possible most of the time. So, it should be native speaker, should be really good with words, should be really creative. Okay? So, you're, you're, you're looking for more for a copywriter or a writer, okay? a truly writer, someone that really loves writing and expressing themselves than just um, a translator. <laughs> yeah. Um, with with uh, Expedia, you have pretty much a guaranteed audience. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of traffic, it's got a lot of money, it's bringing a lot of people. So your social media is going to get uh, it's going to get some, you know the ROI on it's going to get some justification immediately. However, when you have a startup. You don't have an audience, yeah. typically, right out of the gate. Um, you know, you can do the gorilla stuff that I talked about to get, you know, to get some traffic to your website and then try to funnel them into your social media and things like that. But my question is, is uh, what what have you found that works to help build an audience for one of your startups, maybe? Well, from social media. Yeah. It's it, difficult. <laughs> yes. I would say, as you, I would say that you need to boost it from the beginning. Maybe actually with your own strategies. I think you cannot start with social media without start first with internet marketing. I mean, you, you cannot do social media without internet marketing or you cannot do it before internet marketing because first you have to make people know about your brand and then make them know that your brand writes things. So in my opinion, uh, I think that starting a social media strategy without any previous work in internet marketing. So, but by that, by that token though, you're sort of saying that it doesn't make any sense from the very beginning of the startup to do social media. It makes sense, but um, with a different strategy. I mean, from the beginning, if you have something interesting to tell, you can tell it, okay? Although you know that maybe most of the people won't hear it yet, okay? But, I mean, what I say is, it doesn't make sense to do social media, okay, from the beginning, to pay a lot of money to somebody to start Twittering just to, to, to have a lot of followers and to have a lot of um, paid, okay, traffic at the beginning, just because you want to have it at the beginning. I think it makes more sense at the beginning to start just being like very humble, you know. So we are starting. We are going to tell you. We are going. You're going to be in this in this path with with us. We are a new startup, and we are doing this and this and this. So you build again. You build this feeling that you know the brand from the beginning. You know them from the the, the beginning when the person that was twittering was the CEO <laughs> that has just started the company, and it, it tells you that it's said desperate because it doesn't get any money or whatever. Okay. So at the beginning, I think. What it really works is to do it at like very personal level and very humble level, okay? That we, we are not selling you anything now, okay? Because we are starting, but we want to share our journey with you, okay? And then when the brand is more consolidated, then you can go more into the professional thing, into the professional tone, okay? A little bit, and then it makes sense to to use that money to to, to do it bigger. But what I actually don't understand is when they, they create a new brand and right from the beginning they pay a lot of money to somebody <coughs> to create a Twitter account and to have a lot of followers very, very fast and to do a lot of things, okay, just to, to uh, try to accelerate the process, the natural process, okay, and, and they try to 
make, I mean, they, they make tweets like four, five, six, 20 tweets per day just to fill the runs, okay? Just saying the really stupid things. There is no need for that. I think it's much better just to Twitter a little bit less, or much less, but the really interesting things, okay? So at the beginning, I think it's what also we have done, or I have done with the social media at the beginning with the startups. It was like very personal in the sense that we are starting, you know, yesterday the, the team went to do this and we felt like that and, you know, we, we want you to feel, to be part of a team, okay? And then when you start developing things, well, you get excited and it doesn't feel that you are selling them anything, you're just sharing the things you are doing. So, in the end it's very difficult to distinguish between selling and telling things. But it only works if you, from the beginning, you started with that. With that. If you start just selling, 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 you're just another brand that I'm not going to follow even Twitter because they're just selling me things. Mm -hmm. If I want to know anything, I will go to the website. But I would follow them in Twitter. I would do that. But one question, do you need, I mean, I think that uh, you, you should, as a company, a startup, start uh, uh, at the very beginning with the social uh, media profiles. Yeah. What do you think about it? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. But as I said, you have to be humble, okay? What I said is that it doesn't, for me, it doesn't make sense to start having a Twitter or Facebook account and, and treat it like a consolidated company. You know, like your first tweet would be, buy our product, 20% discount. <laughs> Who are you? Okay. That's what I say. And it's, it's something I've seen many times. It's like companies that, and then you go to the website and they don't have anything because they have to start it. Okay? So the traffic that you generate when you start a, a, a social profile, okay, as a consolidated company, okay, it, does, it doesn't really return because, you know, you give them the image that you are something consolidated and already working. Pretending to be something you are not. Hmm? Pretending to be something you're... And you, and you lose them forever. Yeah. I mean, they see the website, it's not finished. I'm, I'm not going to follow them anymore. So that's why I, I think it's, it's, it's very important at the beginning to be really honest about what you are and not pretending to really be a huge company because nowadays in, in, in the internet you see everything, okay? You discover it so fast. You see, you see it from the beginning if the company is, is really a company or it's just a startup that just try to look bigger <laughs> than they are. And it's also a shame because most of the people, they prefer startups to companies. They, 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 they think it's more, it's more interesting. I mean, what, what startups can talk, can say, it's more interesting most, most of the time to companies. Companies, they can only talk about meetings that they had with the advisory board in blah, blah, blah. But startups can really talk about small successes, small, um, risks they take, you know, um, so I think it's much better, I mean, people love it, and they, they support you, the thing is that they feel, they feel they are to support you, so they ask you, and how was that meeting, what happened, tell me, good luck, because you're doing this thing, okay, and that support, what I can tell you is when you get that support in the beginning, they always follow you, because it's, it's you're part of the family, you are the, um, the um, small baby uh, brother that just grew up, Okay, it's your brother, so you, you just, just you saw him uh, growing up. And if you just start from, from the top, they don't see that, grow, that growth, and uh, you're just another person. They, they just see you're pretending to be something you're not. Yeah, and, and it's, this it's another is, person. I mean, I you, you haven't seen the growth. And I, like that. This question is because I'm a technical, uh, you know, I had a, I'm a technical guy, but uh, I used to attend to start a weekends all over the, <laughs> the Europe. <laughs> This is my hobby. And in Barcelona, uh, I met a marketing guy, a very, very strong profile, and he, he told me that he didn't want to start with a <coughs> Facebook and Twitter profile for the startup. I said, uh, the name is Trini, uh, I'm still with it. Mm -hmm. But I felt like, like, in fact, I told him, but uh, the same words you're saying, you, you will see the, I mean, the, the person, the, the people who, Who's going to join to these profiles now will see that or will feel that they are uh, joining something that is starting, so that is uh, growing like a, like a little child. Same words I told him. Well, I mean, I guess that, I mean this is something new, and I guess that some people don't feel comfortable about being so vulnerable. Okay, 
because until you know five ten years ago companies weren't so close and weren't so honest okay? companies didn't tell you about their problems they didn't tweet about their problems so I guess that many people many companies they don't they don't like that feeling of being so honest to being so vulnerable okay because with Twitter and Facebook for example they can have a lot of criticism you are exposed to everything they want to tell you, okay? And it's hard to face that. So you can do that. I mean, you can have, as I said, you can have this neutral tone of voice where you talk as a company. You can have it, of course. But it doesn't make sense to have that tone of voice from the beginning. Because you don't have anything. You're, they don't know you and they don't feel you. So. so it's another strategy. It's better not to have a profile if you're going to talk about it. If you exactly, I mean, if you were to talk, if you don't have anything to say, I would say, if you have anything to say, anything in, really interesting to say, don't create the profile. Okay. And, unless you want to, <coughs> unless you want to uh, uh, secure the name. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You could actually, you could create it, but not use it. Exactly. And not promote it. I would, my idea was not to promote it. Not not use the logos in the website if you're actually not using the web account, the account although you might have the domain just in case so yeah it's always a good idea to have it from mm -hmm. the beginning exactly just in case although maybe because you don't want to wait until you're yeah. popular it is and then all of a sudden somebody comes along and takes the domain and uses it yeah. for nefarious purposes yeah. i actually it, it's fun because now you have to make me that uh, according to your uh, your the way you work when you choose the domain, you also have to say, from the beginning, you should also look at the Twitter and Facebook names. <laughs> Almost at the same time. Yes, because sometimes it's so painful when you have a domain, and you have a bought a domain, and you have the brand name, and then you cannot use it in Twitter or in Facebook. <laughs> it's hard enough to get a good domain. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, I would include in your slide, at the same time, it should be at the same time, brand name, domain name, Facebook, uh, um, name and Twitter name and sometimes uh, we have had a lot of trouble with that sometimes you will have to change your initial idea because Facebook or Twitter uh, is already taken yeah. okay and for you it's really important or you will have to find really creative ways to have another Twitter name because the one that you want to take to, you want to use is already taken so yeah I, I agree with you completely you should Think about it from the beginning, take it from the beginning, mm -hmm. although maybe you don't use it or promote it from the beginning. I have myself this problem. I have <laughs> Dreaming.com, so I have Dreaming on Facebook, but uh, Dreaming is the name of a Chinese guy, Tree, <laughs> Ming Tre. Yeah. So I had to put like, do Dreaming. If I can sum up uh, what I hear you saying is the authenticity is like the, the number one. Is a, uh, and, and, and Todd was more analytical in his uh, sort of approach to things, and you are coming more from the authentic side. And, and, and can you be both authentic and sort of analytical, data-driven at the same time? I mean, in, or do you, if you need to be authentic, do you need to use a character full out and to sort of with uh, warts and all, uh, or can you sort of tweak that to? Fit into some good keywords, you know. So, so don't say fuck, you know, so say damn, because that's better in the analytics. Do you see what I'm getting at? You can do it, and, and, sh and you should do it, otherwise, you would, you would end tweeting about who, who knows what. But the thing is, there are limits, of course. There are limits, and, and in the end, there are goals. Okay, so in the end, we are having the Facebook account and the Twitter account for a reason, right? So we shouldn't, we shouldn't forget about the goals. But what I say is that these goals and, and these limits are like really, really ample. Okay, you can cross them sometimes. Okay, sometimes you can put something a little bit more personal because you feel like it. Okay, Christmas time, something like that. Okay, you are not going to sell anything, but you just want to wish people happy Christmas, or you want to share a silly picture. Okay, so the thing is, you have the limits and the borders and the goals, and you can cross them sometimes. But of course, you cannot leave that square completely all the time. Okay. But it's something you can press. Yeah, the, um, our approaches are, are different. In the beginning of my presentation, I stated that it was, uh, I was talking about internet marketing as presence. 
brand awareness and but more presence than actual message where she's where she's going on about internet marketing as a message and they too do go hand in hand I mean you have to have the you have to have both you can't just have one or the other the, the message as well as the presence uh, but the presence is a lot easier to look at it's a lot more nuts and bolts type of thing it's very easy to talk about you know, it's very easy to prove. It's, all of that sort of thing all comes out, which is why I guess I like it. <laughs> it's true. It's true. But it's nice and humble. Yeah, uh, I, I, I always have. You, you always have. You always hope. Anytime you go into a job, um, from from my standpoint, that I'm going to you know go to this business and I'm going to find some good people. Because it's going to be up to them. I'm not going to know their message. It's going to be up to them to communicate, at least to communicate to me what their message is so I can work it out, how we can get it out there. Uh, but the message has to come from them. It can't really come from me. I can give them guidelines on what, what the message should be. Uh, inner experiential marketing, that was one of my guidelines for the tourist board, uh, is that you guys look at your old web page. It's just these pictures landscapes everywhere. Get rid of that. You have to get now. It's all about experiential marketing. You have to give the people something that they can picture themselves in. And the only way to do that is by introducing and injecting you know, everyday people. So that was a little bit about message. So I, I usually veer away from that though and stay on the, stay on the stuff that I I'm looking forward to the last slide now. The last slide. <laughs> All right. Just, it was fine. We already have been talking a little bit. No, just um, the social media success wheel, which I thought it was it could be interesting. Yeah, as I said, don't use machine translation because it kills the voice. Okay, it's gonna be, um, of course, uh, correct, but it doesn't have any voice. Okay, machines don't have emotions, so we don't expect them to translate emotions. And, uh, and of course, the reactions uh, across countries are going to be dif different. So the same campaign is going to be a success or a failure in different countries, and, and it's something you cannot do. Or you cannot you cannot know that beforehand. And of course, take risks. I think it's always good to take risks because you always can apologize. Okay. And again, apologizing, fixing things makes you more human. So that's why it's good to take risks because if, if, if something goes wrong, you apologize and try to fix the things and try to amend things and try to give something to the person to let them know that you care about them, which is great. And I think that people love that. Okay? They, if you apologize and you, you, you actually show them that you want to help them and you want to fix things, then they will forgive you uh, for any mistakes. What is the question mark? Uh, well, if you wanted to just talk about it, it was <laughs> like things, this is my do's and don'ts, but right. of course uh, we have already been talking about that in the case that you wanted to add any more well, do's and don'ts. One thing that surprises me in, yeah. in, in tourism uh, promotion, social, social media, uh, sometimes I've, I've, I've talked to people for companies and they get, they only think in shares and likes. You know, and um, obviously it's important to have shares and likes, but it's not. It's easy to just produce posts that gets a lot of shares and likes, but um, they forget that. Um, I think, in my, my opinion, they forget that uh, that's not what, what, what you want from them. Shares and likes. It's a bit what you yeah. were talking about before, yeah, but it's, it's the, the analytical thing. It's easy to produce a lot of shares and likes. But some companies they say, oh, well, if you don't produce a lot of shares and likes, then and they do, they must be better. But sometimes there are these mm, social media agencies behind them who know how to do but but, exactly. but but you know, as a just as a regular, you know, there's no feeling with them. You know? Maybe you like the picture and you click on like for the picture, but there's no interaction and you don't want to. Exactly. So exactly, that's that's another thing. Many social media agencies they produce the posts. Artificial. Yeah, yeah. but also they don't do the following up. And I mean, sometimes people start talking. Yeah. And you actually you know instantly when when there is a social media behind that because there is somebody saying something interesting, 
that is amazing. Then you can keep up with the conversation. And with, when there is an agency, you just see, you know, an answer that is like very neutral, like, oh yeah, we like, it. it's good that you like it. No, <laughs> you should just, you have the conversation, you have the lead, you have to keep it. But um, that's, I mean, I guess that maybe this is so new that even social media agencies are trying things. And, and right now, the way they focus most of the times is like a production factory, you know, like I have to produce this number of tweets and this number of posts and I have to get this number of likes and this number of shares and that is that those are the metrics. Okay, yeah. so if, if I if I do all these numbers, then that means that my job is good. And of course, likes and shares doesn't mean clients, doesn't mean yeah. business or revenue. So, and uh, but it's something so new. I mean, this that's why I'm so interested in these new ROI tools that are trying actually to measure. Okay, what is the real? <laughs> Yeah. What is the real benefit? What is the real result of that behind the likes and shares? But it's something so complex, I don't have the answer. I don't think anybody has it right now. But that's why I love taking risks, because I think exploring things and trying new things is the only way to, in the end, discover yeah, yeah. what true. works and what's important. So, but I mean, this, this kind of being so analytical in social media and, and making the same things you can you can use Google Analytics to create goals that and a goal might be you know somebody landing on your product page or even a goal is that they make it through to the success page or a successful order and then by doing that in Google Analytics if you have a Google AdWords account or if you have a social media account like Facebook and they they come from your Facebook to your website then you can track you can track it a little bit but it's still not going to give you the whole picture. Exactly. <laughs> it's more like a, they, 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 they measure very good the quantity. They don't know how to measure the quality yeah. yet. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, so thank you very much. Great, thanks.